was Phil. We really said we'd have a chat about faith and catch up about God. Classic. He's late. Come on, Phil, where are you? I'm here, mate. Hi. I'm sorry, sorry, mate. There There was a rare replacement bus, you know what it's like. I'm so sure, sorry. Sure, sure. How oh, are you? I'm good, mate. I'm good. good. Mate, how are you? How's your faith I'm, life? Yeah, good, thanks. Finding a bit tricky at the moment. It's a bit... Oh, you go. Well, we'll see. Hey. No, that's your phone. <laughs> my bad. Let's have a look. Um, oh, my goodness. No way. Arsenal are signing Mbappe. This is crazy. Oh, oh it's a joke. I can't oh, believe no. it. Imagine if that was going to happen. Oh, I think they should, he should be signed to Tottenham. No, no, let's, let's not go there. <laughs> I think no. he'd be pretty good at Tottenham. Mate, let's get back to it. Sorry. Oh, um, yeah, your faith life. How yeah, you it's good. It's a bit hard, like, having to... Oh, sorry, one sec. That's okay, don't worry. <laughs> oh, look, the news. I love the news. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think about this? Oh, it's so it's sad, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit risk. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, sorry. yeah, that's fine. You were saying? Um, it's good. I've moved to London. I've got a new job, and it's quite difficult to find the time yeah. to keep up with prayer and just like having to wake up. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. I know. Oh, oh, because yeah. oh my goodness, Jazz, I forgot to pick up the snacks for overflow. Phil, oh, no. they're like the most oh. important part. Oh, <laughs> you know what? Ask this. I'll run off. It'll okay, be fine. fine sorry, fine. I'll put it away. Okay. You were saying struggling to find the time. A little bit, yeah. But that's, yeah. that's okay, we'll get there, we'll get there. Yeah. How's your faith going? Yeah, you know what, it's been a bit tricky recently, just trying to get into something new. Oh. <laughs> so many notifications. Um, oh, do you know what, working nine till six means I sit down a lot, so I had to put a reminder for doing 10,000 steps, oh, yeah. and I've only done 2,000. Oh no, So I yeah. better get walking in a sec. Yeah, 10,000 in <laughs> yeah. all right. <laughs> Anyway, um, what were we saying? Your faith, you my go. My faith, yeah. No, I was yeah. saying, just need to find a bit more time to get my prayer. Oh. Sorry. Oh, let's have a look. <laughs> oh my goodness, mate. Do you remember this? No way. Oh. oh my goodness. We should definitely go back. Absolutely. When are you free? I'm free in August. Oh, are let's you? so go. Let's Second go. week of August? Yes. Okay, 100%. let's go. Let's pick it. Let's pick okay, it. let's go. Uh, but before we do that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> how is your faith? No, it's good. I've, I've been trying to find that time to get back. Oh my gosh, Sorry. <laughs> Oh, I've got an email. I love getting an email. It's yeah, like getting yeah. a letter. <laughs> Very exciting. And I also find it really hard to leave um, notifications. So I'm just going to... Yeah, you go, out. you go. I get it. That's so fair. Okay, you know what? That can wait. That can wait. Cool. You carry on. Yeah. No, been struggling to find a bit of time for my prayer. But it's getting there. It's getting there. Um, yeah. How, how are you finding maths recently? Maths is good. I'm searching for a new church. Sorry. Um, <laughs> oh. Oh, the new the new episode's out. This is great. Oh, we should watch it. Absolutely. I love yeah. a series. Yeah, it's good, but it's really hard sometimes because of the binge watching and yeah. then you just don't do anything else. Honestly. I kind don't... of like we don't talk about God. Oh, yeah. so true. Let's get back Let's into get it. Let's get back to it. <laughs> you were saying maths. Maths, good. Trying to find a new church just to like build a community in London. Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> what is it this time? <laughs> so be real, look, you have to admit, this is a classic guy post, yeah. lager and a roast. To be fair, I'd love that right now. Um, yeah. yeah, but I'll tell you what's better than a roast is an Indian roast. Oh, Jazz, you're so wrong, but that's so okay. No, it's no. Just, <laughs> honestly. Have you ever had my mum's Indian roast, though? Have you ever had my mum's English roast? No. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should definitely come over and try the Indian yeah. roast. Wherever mum is, in. she'll get it for you. <laughs> Sorry, you were saying, maths. Maths, just, you know, want to find the right church and be where God wants me. Yeah. But we'll find it, we'll Absolutely. get there. Absolutely. How about you? Yeah, been okay. Been a bit of a struggle at uni. You know, mm. Sorry. Oh, one more, hey. <laughs> Here we go. What's it this time? Oh, mate, isn't that the phone you've been wanting? Yes, it is, because my phone has a not a great camera. Yeah. So it would be really great to get that phone, actually. Yeah, Facebook Marketplace. We'll keep an eye on that oh, one. Yeah. Oh, Phil, look at the time. Oh, my goodness. Don't you have to go get the snacks? Yeah, okay. Oh, I better gosh. run off. It's been okay. so good to see you. You too. See you in a bit. <laughs> Phil and Jasmine and Jamie on the PowerPoint have just given us a snapshot of today's culture that we live in, that we all are affected by, but perhaps young people the most of all. We live in a digital age where access is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and so we are constantly bombarded by distractions and influences. If we are to share the good news successfully, 
We need to understand our culture. And here are some suggestions of current trends. Emotions are all important and can determine whether something is thought of as good. The road of discipleship is hard and therefore can be unattractive in an age which seeks to eliminate any discomfort. Individualism is a sign of our times where we are in danger of worshipping ourselves. Meaning is found in what we think is important and our identity is defined by how we feel. The digital world is all-pervasive and keeping abreast of the latest trends can be exhausting and call us, cause us to feel very dissatisfied. But it's not all bad. On the screen is a picture of our daughter doing an exercise class together, our daughters, one in the UK and one in Australia. Finally, many young people have lost hope in the establishment, and that creates cynicism. But this also creates an open door for evangelism, as the promises of this world have shown to not be working. It's not easy living as a young person in today's society. And all too often, depression and anxiety are the markers of many young people's lives. Many follow influences, but we need to help them ask the question, who are they following, the world or Jesus? Our key conference verse, as we know, was St. Paul praying that we might be filled with hope, joy and peace of God, that we may be overflowing with the power of the Holy Spirit. But how are we going to do that? As parents, biological and spiritual, we are ready to witness what is important. We don't hesitate to tell our children to eat their vegetables or to cross the road carefully or to take care when driving. How much more should we witness by what we do and what we say, the paramount importance of our faith? And we can never underestimate the power of the prayers for the young people in our lives. Our daughter's school had the tradition of dressing up after GCSEs, and her year, the theme was Disney. She is the one on the left. Um, her friends arranged to catch a bus to a town some distance away to go out for pizza. But when she got on the bus, they told her they were in fact going to watch an 18 film. And she was only 15 at the time. When she rang to tell me her predicament, I was miles in the other direction. Couldn't be with her for quite a long time. So we agreed we should both pray. She rang five minutes later to tell me that the bus had broken down on a major road, and because it had school children on it, police had to escort them off. When they finally reached their destination, they had missed the film, so they went for a pizza after all. <laughs> it, it hasn't been all that plain sailing, I must assure you. But our young people need us to understand their world and the pressures that they face Pope Francis, in the joy of the gospel, said youth ministry, as traditionally organized, has also suffered the impact of social changes. Young people often fail to find responses to their concerns, needs, and problems, and hurts in the usual structures. As adults, we find it hard to listen patiently to them, to appreciate their concerns, demands, and to speak to them in a language that they can understand. So our young people need us to be informed, but not engaged. They need us to be in the world, but not of it. Jesus is just as relevant today as he ever was. It is up to us to make him relatable. Jesus spoke to the fishermen about fishing, to farmers about farming, to shepherds about sheep. He used analogies relevant to the time and told stories of weddings, vineyards, lamps and builders to engage his listeners. Let's be ready to tell our young people stories of how God has blessed us 
challenged us, molded us, carried us, and blessed us so they can hear real life accounts that are just as applicable today. Our young people are craving affirmation, authenticity, truth, peace, and connection. So let's give them these things. Let's return to intergenerational relationships where youth ministry is done within the church and not alongside it. We are now going to hear from some of the young people who are either helping lead or who have been on or who, or who are part of the current ascent process. And it's my privilege to have been involved with them for the last few months. This is just one way in which we can disciple our young people. But I hope that seeing and hearing from them will give you hope for the future, hope for the church, and hope for your families. And if, as we heard earlier, you have older children, even adult children, and despite your best efforts, things aren't going as you had planned, knowing that there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus, we stand with you in prayer and hope. So let's start by hearing from Martha and Marcus. Hey everyone, I've never spoken in front of this many people before, so we're going to be using a few notes if that's okay. So the Ascent is a three-year discipleship program for young people aged 14 to 19 to help them to get to know Jesus and be strengthened in their faith. It's currently held at three locations in the UK. The name comes from a special group of Psalms, 120 to 134, called the Songs of Ascents, which were sung by ancient Jews during their journey up the mountain on which Jerusalem and its temple were situated. When a young person joins onto the Ascent, they aren't just joining onto a program, they are embarking on a spiritual journey. They are joined on this journey by volunteer leaders like myself, Phil and Jazz, who all together, all of us, the whole lot together, not just the three of us, <laughs> contribute 15,000 hours each year to the formation of our participants. Our vision at The Ascent is to see a movement of spirit-filled disciples who live out their God-given purpose during their time at The Ascent, but also when they graduate. Our purpose is to raise up disciples in the heart of the church and provide a community for young people to journey alongside. Our mission is to provide a discipleship journey featuring retreats, small groups, and mentoring, which empowers young people to go out and spread the gospel. Our values at the ascent of learn, pray, and go show us the flavor and culture of our leadership. Our teachability enables us to learn. Our watchfulness provokes us to pray, and our intentionality leads us to go. The process of formation in the ascent has three main components, the main one being the weekend retreats. These happen three times each year and are made up of formation, social time, prayer, and much more. Secondly, there are weekly online meetings called Pocket of Disciples Sessions, or POD for short. These sessions are for catching up, being encouraged, and also some formation. Thirdly, there are monthly one-to-one -one mentoring sessions between participants and a member of the team who is assigned to be their mentor throughout all three years of the process. The content covered in pods and weekend retreats includes Catholic social teaching, uh, scripture, sacraments, theology of the body, and charisms, all of which is written up by qualified people with rich expertise in each respective area. To date, over 280 young people have completed the process, and there are currently around 104 participating now. We encourage our young people to serve their local communities through getting involved with the parish and other Catholic organizations. Our alumni have gone on to serve the wider church by entering full-time ministry work um, at a national level with Catholic bodies, including social action, action charities, Catholic diocese, and Catholic student network. At The Ascent, we believe that parents are the primary educators in the faith. We believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and developing prayer lives, creating mission that has a local impact and collaborating with other ministries. We are currently trialing the process of having Pod Pocket of Discipleship within parishes, not just online, which has been going really well and hopefully will grow up more and more. We are also in partnership with different dioceses, including the Diocese of Arundel and Brighton, as well as the Diocese of Lancaster. 
in July. We're really excited to be celebrating our 10-year anniversary. Um, and we've got a really, really big party planned, so it's going to be lots and lots of fun. Um, we're now going to hear three testimonies of what the Ascent is doing currently and what it means to Matthew, Pippa and Isaac, who are currently on the process. Hi, I'm Matthew and I, um, I first came to the be part of the Ascent having heard of it through a close family friend. I'm currently in my second year of the Ascent down with the Zion community in Brentwood. I've always wanted to learn more about my faith and so I decided that it would be an amazing opportunity for me to experience. During our time in the Ascent, each participant is paired up with a mentor who is able to guide each of us and is able to walk with us in our journeys of faith. I can honestly say that I've enjoyed every moment of the ascent, and I feel that although I've enjoyed a lot of it, the thing that I've enjoyed the most is the feeling of fellowship and community that we get from being a group of young people who share the desire to grow deeper in their faith. It doesn't mean that we're all perfect and that sometimes we do struggle along the way, but sharing together and being honest means that we can continue our journeys together. On the residential weekends, we experience a good balance of fun and laughter with spiritual input. The teachings we receive are very helpful for sharing in our weekly pod sessions. There is worship and opportunity for mass and reconciliation, as well as receiving prayer and a chance to take up a slot in our 24-hour prayer rooms. As well as fun icebreakers and games in our cohorts, the fringe that happens on an evening is an opportunity for everyone to play a game or take part in the challenge together, which are awesome times. And also, the food on the weekends isn't that bad. So, <laughs> Being on the Ascent has helped me in my daily life, as it causes me to be accountable and gives me friends who I can rely on and I can be myself around. So if anybody is out there thinking that they should try the Ascent or know someone that might benefit from it, why not give it a go? What, what have you got to lose? Um, oh, God, it's loud. <laughs> Hi, I'm Pippa. I'm in my first year at the Ascent in the Brentwood location. Um, and I think you'd agree, if you knew me before the Ascent and now, um, it's definitely a community that's changed me for the better. Like, Pippa last year would not be doing this right now. Um, I've been given the quote, Jeremiah 29, 11, um, on multiple occasions at my Ascent journey. Um, if you're not familiar, it goes, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Um, and this quote was given to me by my mentor, Jemima, my friend at the Ascent, Poppy, and also by my mum. And the way God's been assuring me of his plan for my life through these three amazing women um, on different occasions has just been really comforting, really encouraging. Um, I've now learnt from my past. I used to have anxiety about coming to school. Um, but now I understand that season was like a time for God to um, encourage me to pray to him. Because I did pray, and now I've got great friends at school, but also my Ascent friends, um, who are great people. I like talk to them regularly. They check up on me all the time, I on them. And so I've really benefited there. Um, I'm also a little more content in the present. Last February weekend at the Ascent, I felt that God was saying to me to invite him, not just in the difficult seasons of my life, as like a almighty saviour that he is, um, but also in the... like small moments just of joy like I got good results in a test like thank you God you know um so that's been really important to me um and I'm also really excited for the future I know God's got me I can't wait to see whose paths I continue to cross what I continue to learn um and yeah I'm just really ready to take part in that in that plan that God has for me um so I pray that you know he's got you too whether it's prayer bible study confession um or like retreats like this like conferences like overflow um, or deciding as a young person that you want to join the Ascent, that do take every opportunity God gives you to get to speak to him. Um, he's your author, he's your sustainer, and I've been assured of this at the Ascent so much by the community. Just really get to know God. He'll fulfill you like nothing else can, and I've really been encouraged to pursue my faith um, by this community and cannot recommend the Ascent enough.
Hi everyone, I'm Isaac and I'm doing my first year with Ascent down in Worth Abbey. I just want to start by saying how I think we all have like so many things in common. For example, you guys don't know what I'm about to talk about and to be honest, I don't really either. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. But I think one thing that we can all agree on is that prayer is really hard. And I just wanted to talk about how the Ascent had helped me with my prayer. So before joining Ascent, my prayer life was tragic. Um, <laughs> I couldn't even do the simple prayers. I couldn't do anything. But I had tried to start praying daily on a number of different, numerous different occasions because, like, my parents or my priest had encouraged it. But I always seemed to find, like, a reason not to. Um, on my first weekend at Ascent, though, we had an input exploring daily prayer. And I remember how, like, at this point, I thought of prayer as something being so, like, complex and overwhelming. And I remember how, like... It, how much it amazed me at how simple and easy it was broken down. I remember particularly um, three points that I took away from that session, and that they were to keep it real, keep it simple, and to keep it up. (laughs) Now, I can't say because of this that I have the best prayer life, and I certainly have my highs and my lows, but I still feel that I'm better equipped now and I have a better understanding of prayer because of the ascent. Hello, everyone. I'm Joseph. And I'm Tomek. And we both graduated from Ascent at Worth Abbey last year with Martha as well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Matthew kind of touched on this already. But as well as kind of pray and learn and share with each other, one of the things that we love to do on the Ascent is just intentionally have fun. (laughs) Uh, And so, you know, we thought, this point in the conference, you've all been sat down a while. Why not play a game? So we'd love to play a game with you. Now, we've only got five minutes, okay? But don't worry, Timic will explain everything, and I'll get the timer going while he does that. Okay, so we will play heads and tails, and Joseph will flip a coin. And um, so you guess heads by putting your hands on your heads. And if you guess tails, then you put your hands on your hips. And if you're wrong, then you sit down. And so, yeah, um, last one gets a prize as well. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. And, yeah, if you would like to play, um, you can stand up now. Um, Okay, first round coming up. Yeah, first round. Time to guess. Five. Guess to guess now. Four. Three. I'll have to put the mic down. Yeah, three, two, one. Believe it. Tails. Tails. So if you put heads, you sit down. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so uh, we go again quickly. We have to make this rapid fire. So, five. Make, uh, choose your guess now. Five, four, three, two, one. Tails again? Uh, tails again. <laughs> All right, so if you got it wrong, you sit down. Okay. Choose your guess now again. So five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. Tails. Tails again. Oh, wow. This is going, yeah. Tails of a time. So, yeah. How many people we got left? We still have a lot of people left. So, let's go again. Okay. So, let's do a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. Heads, heads this time. Ah, yeah, it was tails for a while, but now it's heads. Okay, let's go again. Choose the guess again. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Heads. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, it's heads. How many people have left? Some people over there as well. Okay, <laughs> choose the guess. Let's go. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Ah, uh, tails. So ever. And again, oh, okay, we still got some people, nice. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Tails. Tails. <laughs> See. Okay, let's go again. We've got some people left. Let's go. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. This time, heads. Who do we have left? How so we many have, have we left? Some over here, some people over there. Over yeah. there as well. Two, okay, three, let's do it again. Five. Four, three, two, one. Heads! Oh, who's left? Who's left? There and there? 
Final two. Oh, wow, okay. Let's go. Both going heads. Or both tails. One heads, one tail. 50-50. Okay. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Where is it? Heads. Oh. Uh, you one. Congratulations. Yeah. If you'd like to collect your prize. Yeah. Well done. So the, the ascent um, is also about life after the ascent, uh, equipping young people to live out their faith. And so we're now we're going to hear from um, Jonathan and from Sophie, who are alumni of the process. Um, hi, everyone. I'm just going to... Do you want to take your time? So, yeah. <laughs> um, so, hi. My name's Jonathan. I, uh, I graduated from the Ascent two years ago now in Worth Abbey. Um, and so I was thinking about what I was going to say for this. And what came to my mind, sorry, what came to my mind was the parable of the sower. Um, so um, before I started the Ascent, I was like the, um, the shallow soil. You know, the seed goes in, there's enough space for it to grow. Um, but then the sun comes up, and for me, or at least a particular sunrise, was uh, COVID, uh, as I'm sure it was for a lot of people. Um, and, uh, yeah, so um, that took a year out of my ascent uh, through lockdown. And, um, you know, my room is really not on the same level as Worth Abbey, so that was a real loss. Um, but looking back, although I didn't make the best, uh, I didn't make the most of my time at the Ascent, um, I can see it was like, uh, to stick with the sower analogy, it was like a sort of plow to, you know, turn over and deepen the soil and turn it into the, you know, the rich, fertile ground. But then uh, after, you know, ready for growth, but after the sun come the thorns and uh having had the experience of the Catholic Fellowship from the Ascent, and um, I knew that that was something I really wanted to keep up. So when I heard that one of my mates from my pod was doing Exodus 90, um, the Lent after we graduated, I, you know, I decided to join him. And uh, we did some serious spiritual weeding over three months. Um, and it kind of been that painful because uh, I did it again a second year with Joseph and Marcus and a few others. Um, and so the Ascent has really stood me in good stead for, um, uh, for living a life of faith. It's, you know, my faith is really now in a, a center of my life, um, not only for those things that I've done, but you know, in my family and in my... Um, in my community, in my parish, where I'm now uh, an extraordinary minister of Holy Communion, which is a real privilege um, and real joy. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, the, the sort of the comparison before and after, it's, it's really, really stark. Uh, before, you know, I would have been like, I've got to pray for 20 minutes. How do you pray for 20 minutes? That's in, is that even possible? But now, like, I get an hour to pray, get in. <laughs> I did my exams this year, so I've gone very uh, much longer than I would have, would have liked to without, without that sort of prayer time. Um, but, but now, you know, uh, I think without the ascent, uh, honestly, I think I would have been discouraged out of, out of the faith, out of going to Mass, because you know, life is very hard. But uh, the ascent has really helped give me that solid foundation, helped show me that, you know, this is, you know, Jesus is where we, you know, he's what gives us life. Um, and now, you know, I'm able to live that life. And, and the influence has been really, really, you know, I can't understate it enough or overstate it enough. Uh, I can't understate. I'm too tired for this. <laughs> You know, it's been really good. <laughs> Hello, my name
name is Sophie and I graduated from the Ascent a couple of years ago. Um, so since leaving, well, graduating Ascent, I've gone to uni to train to be a primary teacher. And this, this sort of journey has had a huge impact on my life because um, for uni, so I moved out of my home. So I grew up in community, so all my life I was surrounded by Catholics. So I think making this step and moving away from home, I was surrounded by lots of people who weren't really religious. And I think seeing these lives that people led and how different their morals were was really difficult for me. Um, being pressured into stuff that I didn't really want to do. Um, and so this was really difficult. So I was so lucky that um, a couple of friends that I had made through the Ascent went to the uni with me. So knowing that I had them, um, those who had the same beliefs as me, that I could fall back on, like if I was ever struggling with my faith or my prayer time, like I could talk to them about it because they would understand um, and they would be able to like um, help me through that. So that is one thing that I'm so grateful for the Ascent for giving me was such amazing friendships and those friendships are something that will, will be with me for my whole life. Um, another amazing experience I've had since leaving the Ascent is I had the opportunity to go to Uganda um, with a load of youth. So some of them who are still in the Ascent and some who actually have graduated as well. So we went to Uganda together. We got the opportunity to go to different schools, talk about our faith, um, give out clothes, give out um, sort of like food to them um, and just being able to see how much joy those people had and how much faith they had, even if they had such little. And I think for me, like... Growing up with, I was like, compared to them, I was so fortunate. And just seeing how grateful they are really was so eye opening to me and just such an amazing experience and something I'll definitely never forget. Um, so I'm just so grateful for having that experience and having a sense sort of help me to get to where I am now, building those foundations for me and just helping me through all my, my faith and just my prayer time and everything. So, yeah. So as, as we end our time together, I, I would invite you to pray with your heart as Grace um, reads us the word of God, um, to receive the gift of dance that Rachel has. And after that, we are going to stand to receive as Daniel and Callum um, lead us through their gift of worship. We are just going to receive as the young people pray over us for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. But there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life evermore. Brothers and sisters get along. It's like costly anointing oil flowing down head and beard, flowing down Aaron's beard, flowing down the collar of his priestly robes. It's like the dew on Mount Hermon, flowing down the slopes of Zion. Yes. That's where God commands the blessing, ordains eternal life.
you would stand with the sent participants will pray over you. What a powerful name it is, the name. 